Want to see the Red Baron's iconic triplane come to life out of Coke cans? Then stick around as our artist brings it to life. He starts by first, tracing and cutting out the fuselage piece. Let's watch. As you can see, our artist is opting to cut out a fuselage piece rather than just making it out of a whole can. While that might be easier, it just wouldn't look right. Okay finished. Now to cut the instrument panel free. Next, our artist folds the fuselage piece into shape, following along the solid lines on the template. He uses this wooden dowel as a rounding tool, to round the unique fuselage into shape. Before gluing the assembly into shape, he first reinforces the inside surfaces, with strips of can to strengthen it. Let's watch how he does this. A little more rounding with his rounding tool again, to shape the piece. Then some final adjustments with a ruler, to level out some of the surfaces. And rounding again to prepare for the lower wing. A few more final adjustments, then our artist will be ready to glue the piece together. He starts with the underside of the fuselage. Next, he works his way along the forward fuselage. He makes some final adjustments around the engine disc, then he begins gluing along the glue tabs.
Here he adds some extra glue tabs to the bottom of the assembly. Then he glues along the tabs. Next, he reinforces the inside surface of the fuselage to give it the iconic shape of the Fokker triplane. Before gluing the engine disc into position, he first reinforces it. Finally, he glues the engine disc into position, creating a firewall for the fuselage. Next, our artist moves on to the first of three wings. He starts by tracing and cutting out the upper wing. He'll do this by tracing, and cutting out a top and bottom piece out of can. Then, he'll cut a piece out of craft foam. Let's watch him work. And now, the second piece of the upper wing. Next, our artist reinforces the inside surfaces of the wings, with pieces of can. First, he trims it to fit. Then he glues it into position. and trims off any excess can. Next, he uses his rounding tool to roll the wing piece into shape. He moves on to the next wing piece, where he'll repeat the same steps. Let's watch.
now he's ready for the craft foam. This will give the wing pieces added depth, and allow him to shape the wing into the classic airfoil shape. First, he traces and cuts it out. Then, he test fits it to the can, wing, then glues it into position. Finally, he trims the excess foam off as needed. Then, he glues the bottom piece of the can, wing into position. He does some final trimming of any excess, foam. Then he gives the completed upper wing a good rounding. To help it keep that classic airfoil shape. Then, a little final trimming of the wing's trailing edge. And then the leading edge. And, some final rounding. Next, our artist moves on to the lower wing. He'll use the same steps that he used to create the upper wing, to produce the lower one. Let's watch him work. Finally, he traces and cuts out the foam piece. And then the reinforcing can, pieces, as well. First he trims the reinforcing pieces, then glues them to the inside surfaces of the can, wings. Then, he makes sure to round the wings into shape. He repeats these steps to create the other half of the lower wing. He rounds the wing into shape, then he glues the foam to the inside surface of one of the can, wing pieces. He trims off any excess material, then glues the remaining can, piece over top of the foam. And finishes it off, with some final rounding and trimming. Finally, our artist is ready to move on to the two middle wing pieces. 
Again, he uses the same steps he used to produce the other two wing pieces, to create these ones. Our artist continues, by cutting out the pieces required to make one of the middle wing sections. Again, he's going to use the same techniques that he employed to produce both the upper and lower wing pieces. So let's sit back and watch him finish the two middle wing pieces. Notice how he pays special attention to the trailing edges of the foam wing pieces? And especially here on the can, pieces as well? Now our artist glues the reinforcing can to the inside surface of one of the middle wing pieces. After some trimming, he does the same with one of the other middle wing pieces. Our artist continues reinforcing, until he completes all four pieces. Then, he'll be ready to glue the foam into position. And finally, he's ready for the foam. Here, he trims off the remaining can, piece, since we don't need a fuselage glue tab on both pieces. He repeats this for the remaining wing piece, then glues the can, piece into position. Next, our artist trims off the excess foam for our center wing pieces. Finally, he moves on to the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical tail pieces. Just as he did with the wings, he'll cut out a top and bottom piece out of can, as well as a corresponding piece out of craft foam. He also cuts out pieces from can. To reinforce the inside surfaces of all of our can pieces.
he glues the reinforcing pieces to the inside surfaces. Next, he moves on to the craft foam pieces. He glues the can material onto the inside surface on the vertical tail. Then, he adds the craft foam. Then he glues the can, piece over top of the foam. And then trims off any excess. Before gluing the final can, piece to the assembly. Our artist will repeat the same steps to complete the horizontal stabilizer. Let's watch. He uses a nail file to sand the foam and glues the final piece into position to complete the horizontal stabilizer. Now our artist marks the position of the wing struts on the wings. And then prepares to trace and cut them out. This model will use two types of struts. Wing struts and fuselage struts. Our artist will need to make a total of four wing struts and two fuselage struts to support the triple wing configuration of this model. Let's watch him work on these. For each strut, our artist will need a top and bottom piece out of can. No foam will be used, but he will need to make small L-shaped brackets to glue the struts into place on the wings. Our artist continues to cut out the wing struts. As soon as he gets them all cut out, he'll need to reinforce them with strips of can and also create the L brackets. But first, he moves on to the fuselage struts. Again, he's going to need a top and bottom piece from can for each strut. Next, he cuts the fuselage struts out. Now our artist will use strips of can to reinforce the struts and create brackets to connect the struts to the wing at the same time. Watch how he accomplishes this. You can see here that the can material he glued to each strut is overlapping the edge of the struts. Watch as our artist bends that material at a 90 degree angle. This will create the L brackets used to affix our wing struts in place. Again, watch as he uses the ruler to bend the can material at a 90 degree angle.
Now he'll simply repeat the process to create the remaining wing struts. Finished. Now he uses the same process to complete the fuselage struts. Let's watch. Finally, he moves on to the last remaining strut. Finally, our artist has all of the struts completed. Now on to the next step. Next, our artist is ready to install the wings and the tail control surfaces. First, he starts out by prepping the wings with some rounding with our rounding tool. Then, he tests fits the tail control surfaces in place, in preparation for installing them first. He cuts the two folded sections in the gap as shown, then test fits the horizontal stabilizer over the opening. At this point, our artist is ready to install the piece. He cuts out two strips of cam, forms them into L brackets, and glues them into the gap at the tail opening. He trims the brackets to accommodate the horizontal stabilizer as shown. Finally, he glues the stabilizer into position. Next, he trims the vertical tail, then test fits it over the stabilizer. He forms two fuselage tabs to secure the tail in place, then glues them into position inside the end of the fuselage. He test fits the tail piece into the gap, and trims the fuselage pieces, and the tail is needed. Finally, he glues the vertical tail piece into position. Next, our artist moves on to the lower wing piece. 
He rounds it again with a wooden dowel. Then he test fits it to the bottom of the fuselage. He measures, then marks off the final position of the wing. Then he trims off a piece of foam to fit in the gap between the wing and the fuselage. Finally, our artist glues both pieces into position. Next, he moves on to the lower wing struts, test fitting them into position on the areas he marked off with an ultra-fine point marker earlier. Once he has the position worked out, he glues the struts into position. Now our artist is ready to install the middle wings. He marks off the position on the fuselage, then glues the first middle wing into position. He repeats the process to install the opposite side wing. Now our artist is ready to install the upper wing. He starts by gluing the wing struts into position. Then he moves on to the fuselage struts. Our artist glues all of the struts to the upper wing, then he'll test fit it to the previous assembly. He bends the fuselage struts, at an angle to accommodate the fuselage. Again, he forms small L brackets and glues them to the fuselage struts. This will help secure the center wing area by making sure it's firmly attached to the fuselage. Finally, he glues the upper wing to the main assembly, starting with the wing struts. Next, he glues the fuselage struts to the fuselage. Perfect! All three of the Fokker Triplane's iconic wings are now installed. 
Next he does some surface cleanup to the upper surfaces of the middle and lower wings, to make them more uniform. Then he anchors the wing struts beneath the middle wing to make sure they're secure. Now, our artist anchors the underside of the upper wing. And then he anchors the fuselage struts to the upper wing as well. The rectangular pieces of can, he's gluing over the glue tabs, will ensure that the assembly is secure and durable. Then our artist continues with lower wing cleanup by making them look more uniform. And then he does a little more cleanup on the middle wings as well. Finished. Next, our artist starts work on the engine and propeller assembly. 
He starts by cutting out the prop from A and W root beer cans. For our prop, he's going to need a top and bottom piece out of can. For the rotary engine, he'll opt for bare aluminum cans. Let's watch. And now he traces out the parts for the triplane's rotary engine. Now, he reinforces both engine discs with a piece of can. Next, he traces and cuts out two discs out of craft foam. These two foam discs will be glued to the reinforcing can, we just glued to each disc. So our artist trims off the excess foam prior to gluing them into position. He marks the glue tab for the rotary engine wall then glues along the glue tab. Now he dabs glue along the wall edge and inserts the first disc. He trims off the second foam disc, then glues it to the back of the can, disc. Finally, he dabs glue on the other wall edge and inserts the last disc. Now our artist is ready to finish his prop. He cuts out strips of can to reinforce both halves of the propeller assembly. Then he glues both halves of the propeller together. He trims off any excess can, as needed from the propeller. Now, he's finally ready to trace and cut out the nose cowling and nose piece. For the nose piece, he'll need a top and bottom piece out of can, plus two pieces to reinforce each half of the nose piece. He trims off the nose pieces to glue to the inside surface of each half, then glues them into position. Then he glues both halves together. Next, our artist test fits the nose cowling to the nose piece by first bending in the glue tabs on the cowling piece. Then he test fits the pieces together and trims the nose piece as needed. Now he traces and cuts out a reinforcing nose piece to glue to the back of the nose piece, once both pieces are assembled. He trims off the reinforcing piece, then glues it into position.
Now he marks the position for the propeller hole on the face of the nose cowling assembly, and then fully punches it through. Next, he test fits the engine and the nose cowling piece over the fuselage. Finally, our artist adjusts the glue tabs at the front of the fuselage to accommodate the nose cowling assembly. Now he's ready to punch a hole through the engine disc to accommodate the propeller. He removes one of the discs in order to more easily do this. The hole will need to be wide enough to accommodate an air can, plastic tube so that the prop can be secured with a finishing nail. Let's watch how he does this. He inserts the air can, plastic tube, then widens the hole on the opposite side. Then finally he glues the engine disc back into position. Finally, he punches a hole through the propeller. Then he test fits all of the pieces together to ensure that the propeller assembly works and spins freely. Next, our artist glues the engine disc into position. Then he test fits the nose cowling and prop assembly. He doesn't waste time, and moves on to the landing gear assembly. He traces and cuts out the landing gear struts, the wheels, the wheel, covers and starts off with the landing gear spreader. For the spreader, he'll need a top and bottom piece out of can. He takes each piece and bends in the sides as shown. He cuts off the sides on one of the pieces as seen here. Then he glues a reinforcing can, piece to the center of the spreader. Then does the same for the other spreader piece. And finally, he glues the two spreader pieces together. Now our artist traces and cuts out the wheels. He'll need a top and bottom for each wheel, as well as reinforcing pieces. Our artist now traces and cuts out a pair of wheels out of the craft foam. Again, the craft foam will give the pieces some added depth. Next, he glues the reinforcing can, pieces, to the inside surface of each of the can, wheels. Then, he glues the foam wheels to the inside surface of one of the can, wheels. And finally, glues the remaining can, wheel, over top, finishing our wheels. Now he moves on to the landing gear struts. Again, he'll construct these by tracing and cutting out a top and bottom piece out of can. He won't be using craft foam on these particular pieces.
Just as he did with the wing struts, our artist reinforces the inside surface of the landing gear struts with strips of can, leaving an overhang on each branch of the strut. He'll turn these into L brackets as he did with the wing struts. Now, our artist glues both halves of the landing gear strut together, then he bends the L brackets at a 90 degree angle just as he did with the wing struts earlier. This will make it easy to attach our landing gear struts to the bottom of the fuselage when the landing gear is completed. He does some quick sanding to the wheels to make them a bit more rounded, then he moves on to the second landing gear strut. Once again, he glues the two halves together, then makes sure all of the L brackets are bent at a 90 degree angle. Now, he test fits the landing gear struts to the landing gear spreader, then glues them into position. Our artist adjusts the angle of the landing gear struts, then test fits the wheels. Then he traces and cuts out a cover piece for the spreader bar, to cover the L brackets used to secure the struts to the landing gear spreader. Now, he glues the cover into position. Next, he forms L brackets to attach the wheels to the landing gear spreader. Our artist now starts by gluing the first wheel, to the landing gear assembly. He forms the L bracket for the remaining wheel, and glues it into position on the opposite side. He then glues the remaining wheel, into place, after first measuring and test fitting the piece. Next, he traces and cuts out a pair of wheel, covers. These will affix to the front of each wheel. He makes the glue tab cut, required to form each of the wheel, covers. He then traces out a pair of foam discs to go beneath each wheel, cover, then dabs glue onto the wheel, cover glue tab and glues it on a slight overlap to form the cover. Next, he cuts out the foam disc, trims it to fit, then glues it to the inside surface of the first wheel, cover. And then he does the same to complete the second wheel, cover. Now our artist test fits the wheel, covers to the wheels, then glues them into position. Finished. Now our artist is ready to install the landing gear to the bottom of the fuselage. He test fits the piece, then glues it into position. Now, he anchors the piece to the fuselage by gluing two strips of can, over the L brackets.
Perfect. Our Fokker DR1 triplane is really starting to come together. Next, our artist starts on the tail skid. He'll craft one by first tracing and cutting out a top and bottom piece out of can. He'll also trace and cut a piece out of craft foam. Now, he reinforces the inside surfaces of the tail skid with strips of can. Then, he glues the foam center to the inside surface of the can, piece. At the last second, our artist opts for a more realistic tail skid. Instead he uses a marker to blacken a Q-tip stem then glues the stem to the bottom of the rear fuselage. Now, our artist puts the finishing touches on the Fokker DR1, triplane model. First, he'll use a couple of Q-tip stems, and then he'll roll some black craft foam around each one, to make a couple of machine guns. Next, he glues some German World War I insignias onto the model. These were simply printed out on an inkjet printer. Awesome, isn't it? Next he adds the machine guns he crafted earlier. And, it's finished. And that's our video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and hit that subscribe button. See you next time.